Welcome, <laughs> Nick Stober. Um, Nick grew up in Western Colorado, um, kind of up in the mountains and um, had access to uh, not much TV, but a lot of National Geographic and nature shows. And I think that probably formed his um, interest in um, uh, both landscape and photography. Um, and today, Nick lives in San Luis Obispo. He focuses on landscape photography. He teaches classes in uh, landscape photography and he has workshops. And um, he also has a, a wonderful, a fine website with limited edition prints. And I encourage you to, um, his website is in the uh, galleon. I encourage you to go there and look if you have not already. Um, he's traveled around the globe um, from Greenland to Patagonia, Alaska, um, oceans, deserts, nights, mountain photography. So um, it is, uh, I have looked all over his website. It's amazing. You are an amazing photographer, Nick. Um, we're so, so, um, this is just so amazing that you're going to be uh, judging for us tonight. So we, we thank you. And I'm going to turn this now over to um, Jim. And, uh, but before I do, do you have anything you want to say to us, Nick? No, I just hope I live up to that, uh, very nice introduction in this, uh, the pedestal you've put me on now, Cheryl. Jeez. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I'm, it's also nice to, uh, I was telling my wife as I was kind of finishing up dinner tonight, she's like, who are you presenting to tonight? I'm like, Santa Maria. She's like, Santa Maria, Santa Maria. And I'm like, yeah, Santa Maria, Santa Maria. She's like, oh, that's nice. Considering I, I oftentimes do presentations and have conversations with people that are all over the U.S. and to be doing one uh, kind of in the backyard again is nice. So yeah. glad to be okay. here. Uh, can I just make one comment? Can we all uh, mute our our uh, computers because yeah. oftentimes there's something in the background that we don't know about and then it just uh, is very distracting. Yeah, the, the only people whose um, mic should be on are mine and Nick's and, uh, and uh, Penny's. Or, or, and uh, Elaine's, if they're both scorekeeping. Okay. And Penny's is off right now. Uh, um, I'll go ahead and take the first. Okay. The first uh, thing, Penny, if you don't mind. Well, actually, I I could only print out um, the color list. So if you don't mind, Elaine, to be the black and white. Oh, that's fine. Black and white's a short one. I'm babysitting, so I may have to go. So, <laughs> okay. so, so it'll uh, work out. Yeah. So, so Nick, how 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 we're going to do this is um, I will do a run through of. Uh, there's two categories. First of all, there's there's a color and monochrome. Yeah. For each of those categories, we'll do a run through so that you can see the images, and then we'll go back to the beginning, and. Um, uh, that will start the uh, judging part of it. That's where you'll look at the photos and judge them. And uh, you know that we have a score of uh, 21 points maximum. Did, yeah, did get I've, already, I've already pre-scored everything. Great, so. that's, that's perfect. That's <laughs> well, perfect. I, was reading, I was reading my notes. I was supposed. To, <clears throat> I thought I was supposed to do that. Whoops. Yeah. That's fine. That's what, I have no idea whose images are it. Who's it? Like, I can't even play favorites. If one of you tried to submit a bribe ahead of time, I wouldn't even know. Which images they were. So, uh, yeah, well, we did that kind of on purpose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. back. So, okay, so I'm going to start now. I'll, I'll start sharing. Um, and uh, let's see here. Okay, let me, it takes a minute here for me to get some of these things off my screen because my screen's small and, um, Sometimes things get in the way. Okay, so now uh, here's here's the. Uh, let me go to full screen here. Uh, let's see. Is it going to go to full screen? <coughs> there we go. Um, okay, let me. I hope you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, so so uh, here's the first one. We'll just step through this.
pushing it. Okay, so now um, we'll go through. Were these the images I was supposed to be sent? I'm sorry? Were these the images I was supposed to be sent? Didn't you, this was what you were supposed to be sent. Didn't you get these? Uh, they don't, yeah, I got these. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> <You're All right. laughs> these are the ones i judged so these are the ones you judged so now you can start uh, giving your, your your critiques and and scores okay well, so that uh, first wait 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 i have to give the title first oh that's right i'm sorry okay um and this is 105 freeway okay i didn't know i was giving the critiques first i thought i was just giving the scores but i can do that so um well, at this point, you can give the score and then tell us your critique. So do we want to go, um, you want me to do the scores? Do you want me to do the critique and the scores together or do all the scores and then come back and do the critiques? How do we, what's best for What we usually do is uh, the judge will give the critique and at the end of the critique, he will give the score. Okay, great. All right. That sounds, that's a, I like that plan. Yeah. I'm on board with that. Okay. All right. Let me pull up my score sheet. Um, so I have it to reference so I don't have to, I don't make something up and all of a sudden, this one's a 65, what? So. <laughs> okay, um, <clears throat> so I liked, you know, this image was uh, image number one. So obviously the first one I saw uh, as I loaded them into Lightroom and took a look at it. Uh, there's a lot about this image that has a lot of um, intrigue in it. Um, of okay, I understand the car. You can see kind of the blurriness of the car lights. Um, I'm gonna turn this. Well, you can't see. I cannot. It's not my screen. So even if I'm pointing at something, you won't be able to tell. But um, the car lights, you can tell those kind of on the left. But what is actually creating the lights that are above? Uh, a little bit of the critique of the of this kind of the specialness of what's on the side of the image. Is that a building or is that other some other lights that are there and kind of how the whole scene was created? Um, and a lot of this, the thing I also liked about this image was the fact we still had uh, what appears to be a white stripe um, kind of in front of us, indicating some element or some level of uh, a highway. Um, so without the title, um, there's enough to kind of show a little bit and give some scale and some scope of where something is without it being like, okay, what is that? What am I looking at? Um, so I like that. I liked the, <clears throat> the variation and all the different lines as well. So it isn't just one. Uh, one particular line, there's a lot of stuff going in. Um, so my, I like this image. I scored this one as a 17. A, a 17? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, <clears throat> the next photo, uh, let's see. It's not. Let's see if I can. Um, it's not. There we go. Oh, okay. Looks blurry. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, the title for this is just kind of a file file name. Um, so I'll I'll use the last three uh, characters. It's F nine zero. Okay. Uh, so F nine zero. It had. There's a couple elements in this image that were intriguing to me. Uh, one was it almost looked like it had some double exposure characteristics in it. Uh, there's a couple other images in here that looked like they could have been uh, double exposures. Um, there was a little bit of that ability to figure out, a, a, you know, make your own story up uh, within the image without it being completely obvious. So it looks like this individual is talking on the phone, possibly pushing a piece of luggage um, through some area. And so the, you know, this kind of an image for me brings forth some, some storytelling opportunity for people to kind of fill in the blanks for themselves. Um, so whether that's that person's coming or going or what they're doing, uh, you have that opportunity to leave it versus just a traditional kind of uh, regular image that's there. 
Um, the other parts of the image that are, are uh, pleasing are the composition in terms of giving the, the object, and which is a big thing I uh, talk about a lot, giving the object space around himself, themselves uh, to move. And so not having it too close to the edges or the tops uh, and having enough space for the object to kind of move around, or in this case, a person. Um, so another nice image, I scored this one as a 15. A 15? Yep. Okay. For some reason, the um, it's not. Uh, I'm having a problem with bridge here. <clears throat> I have them in Lightroom. If you want it, I don't know if you can make me the presenter. Or no, so, um, we'll just do it this this way. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one is titled "Arch on Fire." Yeah. So, if I'm being honest with this image, uh, I was hopeful that this image was not just photographed in the middle of an August windstorm, um, <laughs> even though this part of the Alabama hills is uh, it's very dry. Um, I had also a little bit of the um, a little bit of a flashback of this image of the somebody doing the the um, I'm blanking on the name of it. It's the steel wool spinning right. uh, and burning the Brit, burning the boat down up in um, up in the the Bay Area, up Tomales Bay. Uh, they were doing that, and it was right before I was going there to photograph the boat. So I was a little disappointed when I showed up and it was charred. Um, that being said, I'm I'm assuming there was good um, good fire practices were put in place, obviously in the rock. Um, this image for me scored very high on the composition. Um, in terms of you know obviously putting putting the, the double the uh, circle inside of the arch uh, was a nice uh, kind of flare with the with the sparks kind of bouncing around. Um, I had mixed feelings about the uh, the wool the uh, the archways coming up above the arch to the left hand side, uh, and whether those were distracting away from the image or not, um, I'm not sure. But didn't make a final decision, <clears throat> but. Uh, I liked the creativity of this this image as well. Um, so the going up to the left had some potential to feel a little bit more distracting versus keeping things kind of focused. Um, the other parts of this image that I appreciated were you could see uh, some of the stars in the background. So you definitely got a feeling of that night feeling, uh, but then you can kind of see through there and see some of the hills lit up, I'm assuming by some, some elements of moonlight. Uh, so I scored this image a 17. 17, okay. <laughs> Avila sliding into the sea. Um, so I wasn't sure if this person had taken this image one of the times I'd been out on a fishing boat off the coast and what the actual <laughs> coast had looked like to me um, when I was like throwing up at three o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> but the, the thing I liked about this image, and we oftentimes see it in, when we get into motion blurs, is it's usually straight up or straight down. You know, it's usually up or down or left or right. Uh, in this image, I, I appreciated kind of the angle uh, that things were done. So the uh, appears the individual had taken some time to uh, move the camera on a diagonal versus in a horizontal or vertical, uh, which projected a slightly uh, different feel uh, for the image as a whole. Um, you wouldn't have known without the title, or I wouldn't have even known that it was Avila, even though it was a place that was known, um, but it definitely portrayed some elements of, of civilization uh, and also that that element as well of definitely showing water you have the boat in the foreground you have some of the reflections uh, that were there um, i think it was the right choice to not show too much of the back you could start to see you could have lightened up probably that the hills in the background uh, and it was the right choice to not lighten that up and keep the focus down onto the light itself uh, so i scored this this is image four i scored this one of 15. 15, okay. Um, if there is someone who is not muted, please mute because there's a background noise going on. It's probably um, my grandson's watching a video. It's in another room, but it it's possible it could be heard. Does it sound like a video? I could try to see if I can get him to lower it a little bit. One moment. Okay, this is titled One in a Million. <clears throat> okay. 
Um, one in a million, indeed. Um, so this image, I'm not 100% sure how it was created. Um, I looked at the image quite a bit. I actually didn't look at the histogram as much as I could have. Um, the the things about this image that are absolutely compelling are are many, many different things. One of which is the title is, is appropriate because you can tell just enough behind uh, the bird, which I think is a snow goose, something like that, or some type of a goose, um, that there's a ton of other birds there uh, with the movement up on top. And I'm not sure if this is a combination of a zoom blur and um, some type of motion where he's moving, the individual is moving with the bird. Uh, but the this image and getting that bird to really stand out so well against everything else was really, really strong for me. Um, so using the proper depth of field in terms of the, the technical portions of things or using selective blurring or whatever. Okay. I'm <laughs> back. Uh, using selective blurring or other techniques to blur out that background and really get that bird. Uh, but I also know, and I don't do a, a tremendous amount of bird photography, but I know how difficult it is to to freeze that moment, freeze, freeze the movement in such a way to get the clarity. Uh, and this image had great clarity. Uh, so this was a, a really, really phenomenal image. I appreciated the technical part of it. I appreciated the processing and to kind of show the scale. And I scored this one a, a 21. 21. Okay. Elk in a hurry. So uh, I grew up, as, as Cheryl said in my introduction, I grew up uh, in between Glemon Springs and Aspen in a town called Carbondale. And I worked uh, my winter breaks from college at the Snowmass Ski Area. And I had a, a tourist one time come up to me and ask me, what elevation did the deer turn into elk? <laughs> that was a straight face question so uh yeah i had to I kind of saw this image for a while and i also grew up uh with elk uh, out in the country with elk herds so i uh i like the image from a lot of perspective the other part the parts of this which are similar to the pr prior image was really portraying that this one in particular portraying a strong strong sense of movement but the sharp focus uh on the eye um so in wildlife photography, as most of us are aware, the eye is the, is the area you want to have in the, in the highest level of focus. And in particular with this one, you know, you can see the rack, you can see the, the, the how fast that you get a sense of how fast this animal is moving, this massive animal. Uh, you could probably almost feel or I can almost feel or hear the, you know, the crashing sounds as these as these elk go through the, uh, the underbrush and the scrub oak and everything else. I've, I've been around it plenty of times. Um, so I like that. I like that the rack was in place and somewhat in focus, but then kind of starts to drift off. And um, there was just there was just a tremendous amount. One of the other things I, I like about this image um, is I always like to see movement going from left to right in images, uh, which is somewhat indicative of how we read. Um, so the, the eye has a preference to see things go from left to right. Um, so whether that was done intentionally or just the way it was actually captured, uh, showing movement into the frame, but then giving the animal space to move out of the frame is also another good choice here. And so I scored this one a 20. A 20, okay. Metro Maestro. Um, so obviously not taken in uh, San Luis Obispo oh. County. Sorry. Um, unless there's a metro station that we haven't been talked about, told about yet. Um, so this one really got me thinking um, about a couple of things. One is scenes and situations or people or myself included that will complain about, oh, the light's not perfect or I couldn't get it exactly the way I wanted or there wasn't enough mood or there wasn't enough atmosphere there or the picture just wasn't interesting. And I look at an image like this and I think, wow. You take a snapshot picture of this, it's probably not that interesting. But if you do some of the, the motion blurring that's in place, you start to really convey a lot higher level of mystery uh, and intrigue in an image like this. And so I like that. I like the composition as well. Once again, giving space around uh, the, the flutist, I think, or 
what he's playing, what the individual is playing here, the space of the movement, kind of some some uh, some scale of where this is uh, within that versus, you know, like oftentimes people, you'll find people sometimes, oh, I'm going to zoom in on the individual in his face, but that doesn't tell kind of the whole story. You can see uh, on the foreground, in the foreground there, the collection box for the collection of his uh, tips, hopefully from him being the true maestro. So another image I appreciated. This one was an 18. 18. On a carousel. Uh, okay, this one made me a little dizzy. Um, I don't think from my childhood I have memories of throwing up off of carousels or anything. Um, but uh, I, I liked, I did like the movement. Um, that was, it really gave that sense. At first, I thought it was going away. Uh, and then as I looked at the image a little more, I could, I could start to tell it was coming at you. Um, so that that motion blur uh, was, was very strongly in place, especially almost that transition from what is the closest part where we see the, the really, really strong blur on the right side to uh, the farther distance portion where there must be a, a young child with his father or older, older sibling there kind of comforting, and that is in a better level of focus. Um, the the uh, critique I'd have on this image would have been to possibly go a little bit wider uh, to the left, and maybe that wouldn't have worked. Um, it feels <clears throat> the horse all the way on the left side of the image feels pretty compressed uh, and pretty close uh, to the left side of the image. And so I think with a little bit more kind of space over on the left, it would have a little bit more movement uh, potentially. And uh, But I like this image as well, 17. 17, okay. Protecting with uh... So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is some element of rain. Um, could be snow, but uh, I think it's rain and a longer exposure, which is a... Uh, or it's an artistic effect. I'm not sure, um, but I think it's I think it's a uh, I think it's rain. the The thing about this image, which I like, was a the the uh, vision basically to say, wait, wait a second, rain's coming down kind of thick. I'm going to take a long exposure uh, and really kind of capture some of that movement or that thickness which is in there. Uh, I don't think I've ever thought about doing that. Honestly, and I looked at this image and I thought, wow, okay, I can see that like doing a longer exposure because sometimes we get that really, really thick raindrops or hail or whatever things and, uh, that could be interesting. Or you could do it as an image stack. Um, good composition. Uh, once again, leaving space around the object uh, for the eye to move. So to be able to kind of fall around the lines versus feeling compressed, uh, having the movement for the the moisture to come into and kind of land in the bottom of the frame versus things feeling good. Uh, so I scored this one a 16. Okay, 16. This is um, file number 218. So this is our same compadre, I believe, from earlier. He's off the phone and has unpacked his bags. Um, this one similar thing. It was it's it's a different type of uh, the last the last image had more of the the horizontal movement up the left to right. This one seems to have more of that kind of vertical movement uh, as you go through the image. Um, a little bit tight with the the head on the top being very very close to the top of the image, uh, and then not seeing the full full scope on the left side makes the image feel a little bit compressed to me. Uh, especially for something that already feels a little bit blurry. Um, so, the, I mean, obviously is blurry because it's that's the theme. And so I um, I scored this one a 15. Okay, 15. <clears throat> Pushing it. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so this one... This one is is an interesting because it's a it's a contract of the abstract panning blurs. Uh, which focus on color or lines, and it's got some elements of the action panning or action blurring, uh, which are there. Those basically four types of blurring, and so I I like that part of it being both, <clears throat> both the uh, types of blurring. It showed the <clears throat> excuse me the intensity of focus, even with all the blurring, it really shows through uh, with this image. 
uh, and that that portrayal of speed was very very strong. Uh, this is a left to right movement image, which uh, tends to feel a little better and like things are moving forward. Like as I mentioned, and try that sometime flipping the image uh, back to the right uh, and seeing the move the other way. And I'll be curious to see your your perceptions of it as well. Uh, so I like that. I liked the um, the real strong nature, but the fo the face being you know something you can clearly identify. This is a a cyclist who's who's uh, not riding leisurely. He's on his way to get somewhere. Um, so this one is image ten, I believe. I'm sorry. What was that again? Is this image ten? Eleven. 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 Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Field of tulips. Uh, lovely image, and. Um, the things I I really liked I had to, I looked at this image for quite some time, um, and a quasi student of motion blurring, uh, intentional camera movement stuff in different regards. I can only imagine how many uh, exposures it took to get this just right, um, because we all know that 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 fine tunement of the sense of the of the camera shutter is really really difficult, especially to pull out. Uh, the detail and so to lose in an image like this to lose just enough of the detail, but, per, but keep just enough of those corners and those edges of the pedals um, was really, really admirable. And I really like that it has such a soft feel to it. Uh, and there's so many great um, kind of lines and shapes that are within the image. And there's just a lot to like in terms of the color, a very pleasant uh, color that has a little bit of calming to me. So I uh, scored this one a 19. 19. Sunset Riders. Um, so this one, it, so whoever's image this took, uh, flip it in Lightroom when you get back home and you'll see, possibly see what I'm, I'm talking about, a left, right. It doesn't impact my scoring of it, but it they just look different. So this one was this one's going movement going from right to left versus left to right. Just a side note, not anything particular. So this one was was great because you got some of the reflection. You got the movement without the solid you know the solid solidity, I guess you could say, or the solidification of the legs. But then there was on two of on one of the individuals, the woman in the middle, you can make out enough of her face to really portray some of the beauty uh, and the majesty. And then the individual on the left, you kind of have some some weird warping of his of his head and some other things which are kind of make it unique. And then there's the complete blurring of the individual on the right. And so some of that disparity between the three of them. So this is one of the rules I talk about in composition called the rules of the rule of odds. And the rule of odds is this thing where the eye or the mind likes to see things in odds. And so one ones or threes or fives typically are going to people are going to spend more time engaging in those images than twos and fours. And the reason is that you can then compare the woman to the to the gentleman on the left, the woman to the individual on the right, the one on the right, all the way to the one on the left. And you're kind of you're getting a lot of movement going back and forth in the image. And so that's a that's usually a compelling part of it. And um, so I, I enjoyed this image. There was space on both directions for the uh, the horses to move into the frame without them uh, being cut off and horses to move out of the frame, which is a good part of it as well. I scored this one in 18. 18. Wandering between dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to play favorites on the best title, but that one... <laughs> That one took the cake for me when I saw the title. I was got a little freaked out by this guy. Not 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 horribly bad. Um, so th this image was was very interesting uh, when you looked at it from the standpoint of how is it created. Uh, there was some thought that was put into the creation of the image, both from the standpoint of the composition, in my opinion, where you have some symmetry between the left and the right. Uh, framing in the the psycho bird man or whatever portion of it is, but also either it's it's a double processing or even the way the camera captured it or a double exposure to have one uh, in the in the darker color, one in the lighter color. 
Um, so there's different story interpretations that could be going on of the battle between, you know, good versus evil or whatever else. And so I appreciated that about it. Uh, it is a center composition, which, you know, is one of the things they always say, oh, it needs to be rule of thirds. I don't believe it does, especially when you have um, symmetry elements that are kind of framing uh, the image in. So I scored this one a 17. 17, okay. Wilting sunflower. Um, so a, a good example of the, of the zoom blur and um, keeping some of that stuff intact um, as we this image for me in particular uh, was the color variation. So we have a lot of greens and reds, um, which could be processing, could be something else versus what you expect with just the yellow sunflower. Uh, the two minor uh, things I would suggest on an image like this is the top left and the top right. Um, those are elements that are uh, a little bit distracting. Um, so I would either have uh, cloned, clone healed those out. So gotten rid of the blue and the dark kind of green on the right or crop that portion of the image out. And the idea being you, you got a circular um, focus both on the inside of kind of the, the inside of the flower and the outside of kind of how it goes in. Uh, and you have the, these radial lines radiating into the center of the image. And but with the those two parts on the right and the left, there's an opportunity for the eye to exit. So it could follow one of those lines out from the middle and instead of reengaging back in, it could just exit out of the image. And so those two things could be fixed really quickly in, in Photoshop. And that would be the uh, minor tweak I would make to that image. I uh, still enjoyed the image, scored this one of 17. OK, so that's that and uh, our scorekeepers. What do we have? Just here? a just a moment. Okay. Okay. Um, we have first, second, and third easy, but then we have a tie for honorable mention, and that would be number seven, Metro Maestro. Number seven. Uh huh. Yes, and also thirteen, Sunset Riders. Thirteen. So between these two, yes, see if I to that. choose an honorable mention. So these are the two for honorable mention. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We'll go to, uh, there you go. Now the pressure's on me. Right. You have to choose <laughs> an honorable mention of these. Should two. I go check my email to see if either one of these individuals has signed up for a workshop or anything since I started or just uh... <laughs> check your Venmo account? Yeah, I'll just I'll put my Venmo on the screen and just wait for the dollar, wait for the Bitcoin to roll in. Yeah. Uh, tough. And I actually had scored these two um, the same because I was wasn't we had a one and we had 15, which would have theoretically meant one and a half honorable mentions if I was following the technical rules. Um, so I don't know if I get to pick half of the image that's half of an honorable mention or whatever, but I actually scored these two uh, the same for the reason of they both are interesting storytelling components um, of taking an image and a slightly different right rule of thirds on uh, rule, the rule of odds on both of them. Uh, interesting parts of, of an activity that that are going on. So uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the, uh, the horse riders, though, the sunset riders. Number 13. Number 13. So. Okay. Okay, I have that. Okay. So uh, let's go back now. And we'll just go through these one more time. Okay. Okay, this is 105 Freeway by Chuck Ubley. Okay. F90 by Deanne uh, Thompson. Arch on Fire by Penny Powell. Avila Sliding into the Sea by Gregory Doudna. 
One in a Million in First Place by Elaine Calvert. Hey. Hey. I don't know who Elaine is, so tell you play favorites. <laughs> Thank you. Nice job, Elaine. <laughs> All right. Oh, Elk in a Hurry in Second Place by Nyla James. Okay. All right, Nyla. Nyla. Metro Maestro by Cheryl Decker. Nice one. On a Carousel by Tony Martindale. Protecting with Love by Jeannie Sparks. Nice. File 218 by Deanne Thompson. Pushing It by Jeannie Sparks. Hmm. Field of Tulips in third place by Elaine Calvert. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sunset Riders and Honorable Mention by Penny Powell. All right, Penny. All right, Penny. Penny, Penny. Wandering Between Dimensions by Gregory Doudna. <laughs> <laughs> Wilting Sunflower by Tony Martindale. All right. Nice. Okay, so um, now we're going to go over to the monochrome, and there are four entries for this. <clears throat> Okay, so there's our run through. So, so we'll start with the. This is titled Aspen Abstract. Okay, so uh, I just got back from three weeks photographing the aspens in Colorado, actually, and um, I the abs I I did one abstract that I was not very happy with. I did a couple pan zooms. Or scarring me some abstract uh, panning zooms that I was a little more pleased with than the uh, my actual abstracts. Um, so I this this image for me really had that that kind of uh, timeless feel to it, that and much much more artistic than um, a lot of the other stuff or my typical style. I'm much more of a realist in terms of my photography, um, but I looked at an image like I look at an image like this and really appreciate. Um, the variation between the the brightness and the and the dark the bright trunks and the dark trunks, and then also either the shorter aspens or the taller grasses at the bottom. Uh, so this is a well executed image. I like the creative processing that went into it uh, to really bring it kind of forward. And there was some artistic vision that looked like was present as well. So I scored this one a seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Rock and surf. I mean, who doesn't love that title? That's just, yeah, absolutely perfect. So um, love this. I, I'm imagining this could be or believing this could be in Montana to Oro, the old, uh, my old backyard. Or in, it's all of our backyards, technically speaking, because I'm talking to people in Santa Maria um, because of the the way things stand up. And I have some great, great images of Montana to Oro that I, I really enjoy and like. Uh, this image, if this was in my portfolio, would be a, an image I would be very proud of. Um, I love the moodiness of this image. Uh, I like the way the light um, is kind of lingering in from the left-hand side um, and kind of bleeding into the image. Uh, it feels like a cauldron almost of like, the. it feels more like it's bubbling uh, versus the mistiness of the water that's there. And, uh, you know, if you don't know Montana Doro per se, it could be like, is this a jagged shipwreck? Is, are we on the planet Krypton uh, or whatever else? And so this is, you know, a, a good example of what we don't often think about with uh, intentional motion or with uh, intentional blur or blurring in our images of using the scenes and the situations and setting that up 
uh, to capture it. And so I, I really like this image. I scored this one of 20. A what? 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. yeah. Okay. Tammy bouncing triptych. <laughs> So I, I played, so this was the right answer to be a, uh, a triptych in terms of having the threes to be able to play the comparison game, which I did extensively. Um, so I was like, wait a second, why is all of the, the, uh, the plaster pulled off on the left, but it looks like she's standing in the same place in the middle and the right, but the plaster is actually there. Um, is she a ghost? What does she do? And then you have like these, these differences between uh, parts and pieces of the image uh, as well, where you're like, what, what's going on? Why is there a different variation? What's, what's going on? Is she pulling, she pulling her hair out for, for madness or doing some type of Blair Witch, like a uh, sacrificial thing. Uh, so I appreciated the, the creativity of it, the different uh, body postures, the showing of the movement of, of hair uh, by capturing things correctly versus freezing it as an instant in time. I scored this one a 16. Velodrome number 23. So I have a, a really close friend of mine, uh, best man at my wedding, who's uh, who did velodrome riding for a number of years. And um, I never photographed him when he was doing velodrome. <clears throat> and it's one of the... It's four o'clock in the morning for the Summer Olympics and uh, velodromes on TV. It never gets prime time, but it's an absolutely fascinating sport to watch uh, when you have it. So this image in particular was really, really um, excellent selection and choice of how it was processed. Um, the choice of black and white made this image much more powerful to me um, versus, you know, cycling uniforms are all the time very color just because of all of the lines and the circles that were present and the way that the, the, the camera picks up that motion blur of how quickly the, um, how quickly these cyclists are moving and makes it look like they're, you know, projecting or protruding out um, things out of their tires, essentially like they're like, what is going on? Why, what, what are those things there? It almost looks futuristic um, and the portrayal of speed the movement both from the standpoint of the individual on the left having space to the individual on the right having space to move into uh, and not having distractions within the elements. Uh, so not if you process this image in color, there'd be distractions of the track. There'd probably be color variations you'd be distracted in. So this was an excellent choice uh, in black and white. I scored this one a 21. 21. Okay, that does that. Yeah, so. uh, we have no ties. Okay. So let's let me go back here. Okay. This is Aspen Abstract by Nyla James and third place. Third. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Rock and Surf by Chuck Ubley and second place. That's not here, is he? Uh, here. Yeah, he was, yep. I'm here. Okay. This is Tammy Bouncing Triptych by Jim McInnes. <coughs> and Velodrome number 23 are first placed by Jim McGinnis. Oh, very nice. That's wow. Nice. Love that. Great. I, yeah, really cool. Right. I have a so, question for Jim. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, okay very good. Um, question for you, Jim. Did go you ahead. Did you photograph the cyclists in Italy? Excuse me? Did you photograph the cyclists in Italy? No, this was in... Um, Dominguez Hills and uh, at okay. the, uh, yeah, they have a big uh, sports complex at the college. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I know there's a velodrome there. I, I've been to the velodrome in Encino. I've not been to the one up there. You have to, you have to speak um, up or sit closer, Ed. We okay. Can. I, I've been to the velodrome in Encino. I haven't been to that one that you've been. Yeah. I, I know you've been to Italy and I thought, wow, maybe that's Velo Vigorelli in Milano. One of my bikes was built by a builder that had his yeah. shop. They, they don't, the you don't have a velodrome in Venice. Pardon? 
I say they don't have a velodrome oh, in Venice. Yeah, yeah, but I thought maybe we'd gotten to Milano also, <laughs> maybe it had been there. But uh, yeah, my the guy that built one of my bikes, his shop was under Velo Vigorelli. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any comments or anything? Um, I just thank you for the for the great critiques. Um, really appreciated. Um, I, I liked uh, your thought process and and the explanations that you gave. Well, thank you. Yeah. Very, very... I, have, I have a comment on uh, Metro Maestro, if I may. Fire away. Yeah. Fire uh, away. Each time that came up, I liked it a little bit more. Uh, and I'm not uh, real sure why, but uh, there was something about it that, that uh, held my attention a little bit better each time I saw it. I thought it was a, a real nice image show. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Yes, show it again. Yeah, show, show it, it again. again. Show it again. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, it, look, it looks darker on the projection on this one than it did on our computer. I don't know. Which, which one was it, Ed? Metro Maestro. Number seven. Uh, what, number what's seven. the number on seven it? In color. Seven. Seven. Tony, you tell him. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a lot of nice images tonight. Yeah, it just, you know, I mean, I think I'm kind of like, I think the impression I got from our judge tonight, I'm kind of, you know, I don't generally go for the blur and the stuff and the manipulated stuff. I like more of the realistic view, but uh, I think in this case, the loss of detail and just the softness in there lets our mind wander into the activity and the mood that's present and what this guy's trying to do. Um, and it does, it, it just grows. I, some of you know, I, I do a lot of photography of musicians and they, they seem to like my work, but this, this is not something I would do. And I think it's very, very nice. Yeah. Well Thank said. you. It's nice coming from you. I'd like to hear about the one in a million and how that was, uh, image was uh, accomplished. So that would well, be number five. Let me bring up number five here. Um, that was taken, um, we went to um, Bosca de la Pache, um, <laughs> taking pictures of the geese. And um, I was trying to get pictures of, you know, the blurred geese instead of a sharp <laughs> image. Um, and I was just fortunate enough that this particular goose isolated himself enough where I could lock in my focus on him and just pan with him a little bit. It was a very short pan. It wasn't a long <coughs> pan, but um, it was enough to um, separate him from the rest of the flock. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's something I practice doing a lot, panning, and mm -hmm. I've had a lot more um, unsuccessful images than successes. <laughs> It's a, it's, well, it's a, it's a striking image and I, uh, I just wondered what the technique was. So thanks for sharing that. Thank you. I, I missed half of the critique because that's when I had to, to go check on my grandchildren. Oh, no. But, um, I, I know probably something was mentioned about it traveling, uh, to the left. Maybe I should try flipping that one too. I didn't want to criticize it because I like the image so much, but yeah, that was, I think I did say try flipping it just to see what you think of it. Cause yeah. Yeah. The, the flipping thing, I like the, I have a, a image of a, a moose crossing in front of the Tetons at sunrise, which is uh, the moose is moving left to right. I could never flip that image to go right to left because the Tetons would then look completely out of whack. Oh yeah. It's unrecognizable. So yeah, yeah. Versus this image. You know, nobody would ever know if, no. if the goose was actually going left to right or right to left or anything else. And yeah, hey, thank you. That's a good uh, suggestion. I will do that. Nick, I, I, Nick I have you. a quick question. Um, could you just? You said there are four types of blur images, and I really would like to know what the what are those four images? Can you give us a like a five minute thing on that? Yeah, so I actually, I don't know if you can give me power to share or if that's like, you, you have to come back for a fourth time before you get power to share. I have put together a little um, reference sheet. Um, so I don't know if it's possible. But I think we can do that. If not, I can just email it to you later. Uh, let's see here. 
There should be a way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all, all you have to do is share, I think, Nick. All I do, it's not oh. enabled. So it's okay. Super tech. Yeah. So it's it's uh yeah. it's not enabled on my screen. To, it's not enabled on my little thing here. So it could be just the setting. I don't I don't blame you for not giving me that power. So <laughs> <laughs> um, the the four types are zoom blur. Uh, that is where you use your lens to execute. Uh, and that gives some of that element of like viewing down a subject down a tunnel, a tunnel. Uh, so when you're zoom blurring, you're focusing in on trying to isolate and focus in on one element and then blur. And then you're taking the long exposure and you're turning your zoom either in or out. It doesn't seem to matter for me whether I go in or out. I kind of still get the same effect. And then if you do it correctly without slapping your tripod around, you should be able to keep what you're focused on in focus, uh, which is good. The next one, which is the most common, is subject blur. And that is where you're blurring some aspect of your subject. And that is most common what we see with water or clouds. Uh, but I would also say, um, as I was going quickly through my portfolio and picking out like 10 or 12 images, and I felt a uh, showcase blur that there was, uh, that's also something I would consider star trails. Oh, now I'm the presenter. Yeah, there you go. Still can't share for some reason. Probably because I just installed the WebEx today. Ah. Probably was going to make me restart or something. So sorry about that. But. Okay, so I'll take it away from you then. <laughs> okay, good idea. So I don't want that much power to go to my head. Um, but then the other part of it, which I would add on to subject blur, is the concept of controlled subject blurring. And that that is like night photography shooting the Milky Way, where you're taking the blur of something right up to the edge before it becomes uh, something that's not almost essentially not usable. And so with Milky Way, you're trying to push the thresholds to be able to keep your stars pinpoint, but then get enough of the light. So it's like a, it's like a selective blur, uh, what's going on. Uh, the third type is abstract panning blur, and it's a way to explore colors and patterns. Uh, and in that one, that is where you're typically doing either uh, side to side, like horizontal or vertical or vertical movement of the camera. And the idea is to explore like I said, the colors are the pattern, so you're looking for the uniformity, but your composition is much less important there. And so you don't have to worry quite as much about composition versus the zoom blur and the subject blur, you certainly do uh, need to be worried about composition. And then action blur is the fourth, and that's used to show movement and speed. And in that one, you have to choose between keeping the subject in focus or showing the movement. And so, for example, in the goose image, we saw really effective panning to keep the subject in focus um, versus, you know, as, you know, there's different examples of, you know, keeping keeping the landscape exactly where it is and allowing the object to move through. So you have kind of variations on those types of things too. Very Thank good. You. Yeah, so I'll send a follow-up email with um, <coughs> yeah. the examples. Actually, I can, I can just upload the examples onto my website real quick. And then uh, I'll, email you as guys as well the uh that's for it's a one page reference sheet that shows examples in the descriptions for yes. future reference great S send that to cheryl i think okay I'll make sure if you send it to me nick i'll make sure that um i send it out to the club okay great thank you so um i wanted to show something here just to go back um so if we look at this one this is uh that's Greg's, and uh, there, after your after your comment, I wanted to explain how this was done. So Tony and Greg and I were out at a villa last month, and uh, we were going to do some obviously night shooting. And um, Greg had forgotten his tripod, so I, <laughs> I I had an extra tripod, which I loaned to him. And uh, the problem is it's not an expensive tripod, it's a ball head, and the weight of the camera <laughs> made, the, uh, made the lens tip down towards the ocean. So, oh, wow. So, so I gave him way too much credit is what you're telling me. <laughs> I, I it's, thought it was really funny, you know. Sometimes but, we have happy accidents. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so... 
So anyway, that was just wanted to while we're all together, wanted to uh, say that. I thought we thought it was brilliant until you told us that explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have any? Well, I, I would just say that in addition to the panning intentional movement with the camera, um, you can also um, take the, the camera and just kind of shimmy it or shake it. I mean, it doesn't have to be an exaggerated movement. Um, when I was doing the tulips, that's exactly what I did. I didn't want the long lines streaking from, you know, top to bottom and left left to right. So I just and had a long enough exposure where I really didn't have to move the camera that much, just a little bit, just enough to soften it. And yeah. um, and you're right. I took a whole bunch of images before I got one I liked. <laughs> yeah, I think against the camera movement in the film days would have been something I probably never would have done. Yeah, <laughs> it, it. yeah. <laughs> if you want to do the slight sh uh, shimmering or uh, that you're mentioning, you could also just go to Iceland and let the winds just blow your camera around on the tripod. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just keep that in mind as I was had my tripod uh, eight inches up off the ground, like all spread out, and it blew my camera over on the tripod in these windstorms. I was like, oh, my God, this is wow. crazy. Yeah. Why am I here? So. Yeah, <laughs> well, we, one of the tulip festivals that we went to was extremely windy. There were there was a storm blowing through and the the tulips were leaned over. But even with that wind, it was hard to capture a really good motion in the flowers since they were they were mostly just leaned instead of going back and forth. And uh, that was one of the reasons I decided to do blurs though was because it was so windy that why fight it? <laughs> yeah, there you go. When I, I was in Iceland uh, four years ago, I was up at the Ar Arctic Circle, and the wind was so strong that um, if you open the door, it could take the door off. Yep. And um, so, and then trying to get back in, I, I tried to get back in the car and pull the door closed, and the wind was so strong I couldn't do it, so we had to reposition the car before I could close the door. <laughs> <laughs> we, had to, we had to crawl wow. into the back. We had to crawl into the back hatch one place because it was so yeah. strong. We couldn't get the doors open. Yeah, so. oh, no. that's had, dedication yeah. to be out there trying to film in that. <laughs> well, we had, like, four, we had a four door uh, vehicle, mm -hmm. and um, you never open a door on each, on each side of the car at the same time because yeah. everything inside will be outside. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's crazy. Oh, beautiful country, though. I'd go back in a heartbeat. So, yeah, it is beautiful. Well, are there any other comments? Uh, I just say, Nick, thank you very much. Um, mm. I, I really appreciated uh, uh, your input and uh, your scoring and, uh, you know, your, your comments were very, uh, very useful. So good. Well, uh, I've been, I guess I'm speaking to you individual, the lovely group on December 9th. Um, I've been going back and forth, so you get to see me again, and it's a oh yay! Yeah. Yeah. You're a Christmas show. Yeah, I'm the Christmas. I'm the Christmas show. Sorry. Are you the Santa? <laughs> <laughs> Nick for that one. So, so you got the name. Yeah, he can be Saint Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I will remind everybody that um, Nick also has some um, educational um, classes. Uh, that you can um, that are very reasonably priced. I've signed up for two of them, one in November and December. I'd encourage you to go to his website and and have a look at those as well. Yeah. So, so I just added a couple more. More. Uh, yeah. Exactly. I've had a lot of people say, uh, "Can you do weekend classes?" And I, I was like, "Yeah, I could do Saturday." So I do an um, a one in November on preparing your images for print. Um, and it's uh, 50 bucks for the class. So people are like, what? But it includes about $80 worth of print credits uh, through a print company. So you actually come out ahead. And the other thing we do is we prepare, it's the class size limited to 12 people. Uh, so it's not a lot. And we prepare an actual, your actual images for print uh, for a 16 by 20 metal for free. And then, um, and then you get a copy of my printing workflow. Um, so that one, so it's, it's, really really helpful going forward on how to resize to almost any size and how to properly brighten your screen and i mean bright brighten your images to reflect what it wants to look like 
And then I'm also doing another one on uh, mastering Lightroom. Um, so yeah, that's why my pillow is correctly facing up now, <laughs> which is another <laughs> another one of the workshops that I've done in the past that have just been well, really well received and a lot of information regardless of skill level. So uh, on my website, <coughs> love having plenty of uh, good local people that are uh, together. And, and uh, as Cheryl mentioned kindly, it's I reasonably I, they're priced reasonably. So. Anywhere between twenty five and then the the uh, preparing your print one is fifty. That's the most expensive. So, good opportunity to cool. hang out. Right. Oh, sounds good. Oh, well, thank you so very much for being with us tonight, Nick. We look forward to seeing you again in December. Sounds thank great. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Oh, nice to meet you. Bye. 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 Oh yeah. Oof. You have, to, you have to click the there you, you have to click the uh there you go he's gone okay anybody have anything they want to i thought he was really a good judge um i mean i, I really truly liked uh, <laughs> regardless uh, <laughs> but i mean i i like the way he took the time to uh explain his uh his critiques and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, do we just need to get more people, more well, competition? We we and we need to stop Flavio from eating because we can hear it through the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> do you know really what happened? <laughs> I, thought, I forgot that there was a meeting. And then one moment I said, Jesus, it's Wednesday. <laughs> uh, well, we um, ended up having to babysit last minute. We weren't, we didn't realize we were going to be babysitting, but yeah, you can start another one. Oh, that's the grandkid, huh? And that's, uh, yeah, that's one of the grandkids. <laughs> but um the, the kids drove down from Oregon, and we don't get to see them very often. I, it's been a year since I've seen my grandkids, and so <laughs> Grandma has to pretty much let them do what they want. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, anyway, I apologize if, if their noise interfered at all. 